Hi, I'm Alan Monroe, President and CEO of the Living Desert Zoo and Gardens. Thank you today for coming to our Rhino housewarming party. I'm standing on top of the Rhino Bridge that gives you a panorama view of the future Rhino home. Your support has helped us build and furnish this $17 million state-of-the-art habitat for the Valley's newest movers and shakers. Throughout this habitat, we've incorporated opportunities for visitors to get up close to experience the majestic African black rhino. With such close vantages, guests will notice distinguishing characteristics of the black rhino, such as their two horns and the thick prehensile lips, thick skin, and those cone-shaped ears, which makes their hearing exceptionally acute. Every once in a while, a guest may get the opportunity to use an extra large rhino-sized brush to scratch behind the rhino's ears, one of the rhino's favorite activities. Encounters like these, where people get up close and a chance to experience these amazing majestic animals, creates meaningful and lasting impressions upon our guests and inspires them to learn more about and advocate for these amazing animals. Just behind me, you can see construction is well underway, building a habitat that will meet the diverse needs of the many species that will call this area home. Wide open grasslands with a mud wallow for the rhinos, rocky terraces for the high jumping cliff springer, buffer zones for the springbok, and a tranquil lake will be inviting to the water buck and the pelicans. This habitat will be an engaging environment for a variety of animals, as well as the zoo guest, with diverse feeding opportunities, water features, and individualized areas for each species. This flexible space can be divided into two habitats to suit the needs of the animals, allowing them to move freely and choose where they would like to go. I am proud of the incredible animal care and veterinary team who provides each of our 500 animals here at the Living Desert with the highest level of animal care. Now over to Roxana Bridegan, our Director of Animal Care, who will share more about how this new space will support that excellent track record of animal care. Thanks, Alan. I'm standing in the future rhino barn. This, along with the future animal care and nutrition center, have been thoughtfully designed with animal care functionality built throughout each space. The Future Animal Care and Nutrition Center will feature office spaces where keepers can research, record keep, and plan their days. The Nutrition Center will be a fully functioning kitchen where all the animals' meals will be prepared daily and guests can get an inside look at the detailed efforts required to feed each and every animal. There will also be opportunities to view training and veterinary procedures. As Alan mentioned, a variety of species will share this four-acre habitat, including clip springer, springbok, waterbuck, as well as two species of pelicans, vultures, and some other smaller birds. And two longtime residents, the warthogs and Cape porcupines, will move into newly constructed habitats adjacent to Village Watutu. We are also excited about our subterranean species that will make their homes in specialized underground habitats which will offer excellent viewing opportunities to see two species of mongoose and naked mole rats showing off their big personalities and complex social structures. But the African black rhinos will be the stars. Upon their arrival, the black rhino will be the largest mammal at the living desert, weighing in at up to 3,000 pounds at maturity, standing around five and a half feet tall at their shoulders. These incredible animals are browsers, eating leaves from trees and bushes. This breeding pair has been strategically matched together as part of the Association of Zoos and Aquariums Species Survival Plan. This extensive effort develops an insurance population of this endangered species and builds genetic diversity within the African black rhinos in human care. First and foremost, all the work we do at the Living Desert is to support species survival. But we cannot just save rhinos because we have two here at the zoo. We also support a variety of programs working around the globe to save this species from extinction. To tell you more about our conservation efforts, here is Dr. James Danoff Berg, our Director of Conservation. Thanks, Roxana. Howdy, folks. I'm standing here 
near the future digital education pavilion. And it's here that we'll tell the stories about the iconic African black rhino, the challenges facing this important species, and the work that we do here and around the world to save it from extinction. There are five species of rhinos across Africa and South and Southeastern Asia, and all of them are threatened with extinction. Specifically, closer to home here, the African black rhino is critically endangered, and there are only about 6,000 left in their native lands of Sub-Saharan Africa. The demand for their horn, falsely thought to have medicinal value, is intense and is driving the decline in their populations. Illegal poaching is the short-term reason for their decline, but three countries have the dubious honor of being the largest market for this illegally traded commodity. Vietnam, China, and the United States. Fortunately, there are aggressive efforts in Africa and around the world to innovatively address this rampant poaching and the illegal wildlife trafficking. In addition to breeding programs with the goal of reintroducing the black rhino back into their native range. Living Desert works with a variety of partners to address the awareness of local communities about the value of rhino as a driver of economic growth through tourism. We support anti-poaching efforts such as the Black Mamba's anti-poaching unit in South Africa, and we help increase local conservation education efforts for school-aged children in South Africa and in Tanzania in Eastern Africa. We have directly funded efforts by African parks to reintroduce black rhino into southern Chad, and we lead the Building Community Conservation Success social science workshop training that teaches conservation biologists how to best understand, learn from, and work with local communities to benefit all. Locally, you can join as a conservation partner too. We need your help to help share the story of the rhino and advocate against the use of rhino horn in traditional medicines. It doesn't work, and the demand is decimating rhinos. The combined efforts are saving species, creating and restoring ecosystems, and building conservation skills with communities to foster long-term sustainability, thanks to your support. Now, back to Alan for an exciting announcement. Thanks, James and Roxana. We can't wait to welcome your newest neighbors to the living desert. The rhinos and their friends are crashing the neighborhood, so to speak. Our crash of rhinos, the formal name for a group of rhinos, will consist of a male and a female. That's 1.1 in zoo lingo. Our guests will have an incredible opportunity to see these African species right here in the Coachella Valley at the living desert. And research has shown that these personal interactions lead to a surge of empathy among visitors which builds on their likelihood of advocating for the protection and conservation. We are growing agents of conservation with every interaction. And now you are in for a real treat. We would like to introduce your new neighbors right now. Our female African black rhino is a three-year-old Naya, coming from the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo in Cleveland, Ohio. Let's hear from her current keeper. Well, greetings from Cleveland, Ohio. My name is Travis Vineyard. I'm the animal curator here at the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo, and I'm really pleased to introduce you all to Naya. Naya is our about three-year-old eastern black rhino that we'll be sending to you. We're really pleased to work with our colleagues at the Living Desert. We just wanted to share a few uh, things about Naya. She's very typical eastern black rhino in that she could be very reactionary and responsive to uh, kind of unusual stimulus but she's also very intelligent, uh, meaning that she could be easily trained. And obviously we're gonna do a lot of uh, crate training and crate acclimation for her to take that long journey from us here in Cleveland to you all out there. I know uh, us at Cleveland Metro Park Zoo are always very appreciative and very supportive of our communities. I just wanna extend a thank you to you all who support the Living Desert uh, because you really support a, a colleagues across the nation in our care for Eastern Black Rhino. Our male African rhino, named Jolly, which means powerful in Swahili, was born at the Potter Park Zoo in Lansing, Michigan. He is one and a half years old and already weighs more than 1,100 pounds. Let's hear from his current keeper. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley. I'm a rhino keeper here at Potter Park Zoo. And we're excited to introduce you to Jolly, our one and a half year old black rhino. He was born December 24th, 2019. 
He's super curious and really loves attention from his keepers. We have been so happy to watch him grow here at Potter Park, and we're really excited for his future adventures at another AZA institution. We are incredibly excited to welcome Naya and Jolly and all of the new animals to the Living Desert Zoo and Gardens this fall. Your support has helped make this goal a reality. Thank you and those of you who have contributed and pledged to support the capital campaign and for those of you who donated to the Rhino Registry that is helping us furnish the home for these important animals. Your gifts leave a lasting legacy to the community and support the species survival of these critically endangered African black rhinos. Stick around for a Q&A session next.